Yeah, there's been a lot of work that's being done here. This was a construction site yesterday before this accident occurred. It has been a destruction site here over the last couple hours as they work to rip down some of the facade of this building, some of the pieces that have fallen so that they don't fall and injure anyone as they do this work that will continue here. This is a, a recovery operation at this point is what uh, the Cincinnati Fire Department has said to us. After this collapse yesterday, they were left with a large field of concrete. They began trying to move it by buckets at the beginning as it was still wet and then with, with hand tools chipping away at it throughout the uh, afternoon and through the overnight hours and into early this morning. Now they are bringing in heavier equipment and in order to do that they need to shore up the uh, building, make sure that it is stable enough to uh, withhold the uh, weight of this heavier equipment and they also have brought uh, down some of the uh, pieces that were hanging off the front of this building because of concerns about safety. This is a large field of concrete, about 40 feet wide, about 200 feet long, and they have to chip their way through it to try to find uh, this missing construction worker. And we talked to the Cincinnati Fire Chief about that task earlier the day. We, we had the dogs here, and so we we're using that resource uh, as uh, really our starting point. And, every, and that's where our focal point has been at this point, and now we're just beginning to work outside of that area. Yeah, so that was the area that they focused on. They had uh, dogs that were searching. We saw dozens and dozens of firefighters and urban search and rescue teams from all over the state of Ohio come through this building this morning. That has kind of slowed down now, and what they're doing is shoring up this building so that they can get that heavier equipment in there, begin doing some of the work to break up that concrete and bring in uh, more firefighters to, uh, to do that work as well and work through this recovery operation. Reporting live from downtown, Andrew Setters, WLWT News 5. And recovery efforts like these can take a toll on the crews, including the firefighters who are working to help. WLWT News 5's John London has more in our team coverage at noon. John. Yeah, day two recovery mode. It has a very somber quality to it. Folks here at Fourth and Elm alternate between craning their necks upward and casting their eyes downward as they walk away and wait for confirmation that a recovery has been made. You got firefighters, construction workers, passers-by, employees peering out the front glass of businesses along forth at Race, Elm and Plum. It's a respectful watch here and a long one with a very sad quality to it, knowing the family of the missing worker has been notified and that fire department staff members are keeping them updated and offering their support. For a while, one of the chaplains for safety forces stood on the corner and watched the work to remove debris from the upper floors where the collapse happened. Local 48 Fire Union President Matt Alter spoke with us moments ago about the impact of a recovery operation on firefighters. Well, it's tough. Uh, we don't take switching from a rescue mode to a recovery mode is not something that any firefighter takes lightly. Certainly being around the holiday season makes it that much that much harder. Uh, firefighters are out here, like you said, over half the fire department that was on duty yesterday, over 100 firefighters were at one point down here. Fire companies are still on scene. 24 hours after, almost 24 hours after the beginning of this incident. It's Matt Alter who was on the phone a short time ago with Mayor John Cranley talking about efforts uh, that continue to assist the family of the missing worker. This is a long wait here with a lot of long faces. Live downtown, John London, WWT News 5.